if I want to find the absolute extrema of secant x on this interval, it's closed. First of all, we have to find where the derivative equals zero to find critical numbers. And then we also check the endpoints. So derive this first step. G prime x is secant x tangent x. OK, that was hard. Now we have to set that equal to 0 because you set the derivative equal to 0 to find critical numbers. Now you understand here you have the something called zero product property. You basically set each piece because it's multiplied equal to 0. So we're setting each piece equal to 0. Now we probably don't want to look at that in those forms. It would be easier to change them to sines and cosines, hopefully. So this one right here looks like it's going to be a 1 over cosine x equal to 0. And this one looks like it's sine x over cosine x equal to 0. Oh, by the way, critical numbers are where the derivative equals 0 as well as where it does not exist. So do we care about the bottoms? Yeah. Yes. Because it's where it equals 0 or it does not exist. So we want to set 1 equal to 0, which makes no sense. So we set cosine x equal to 0. When does cosine equal 0 in this interval? It's pi over 2 in that interval. Is pi over 2 in that interval? Is any number for cosine? Okay, let's do this. All, where are all the cosine x equal to 0? You have it at, is cosine? You have pi over 2. You have 3 pi over 2. Do you have a negative pi over 2? So negative pi over 2. Are any of those in the interval? Are any of them in the interval? No. So do we care about any of these? No. OK. That was a waste. Next, do we have to set this one bottom equal to 0? Uh -uh. You could, but hey, there's the answers. So let's just set the top equal to 0. Where does sine equal 0? Well, x equals, oh, this should probably be x equals over here. x equals 0 pi, negative pi, anyways, are either of those in the interval? Yes. So we do have this one is actually in our interval. None of the other ones are in the interval. So all we're going to deal with for this particular problem for finding absolute maxes or mins are these two values and 0. And what we're going to do, how do we find absolute maxes and mins? We technically, we just plug in these three values into secant, into the original. Be careful, a lot of people mess up and plug it into the wrong one. So let's start off with the negative one. Negative. And then we're also going to plug in 0, and we're going to plug in pi over 3. Just doing them in order. And we plug them into secant. So can I change secant, by the way, to cosine? A little bit easier for most people. Now, negative pi over 6, that's a little annoying. Um, pi over 6, if you think of the unit circle, let's little, draw a little sketch here. Unit circle, whoa, there he goes. Is that 6 right there? Is that negative 1 6? Which the height is, what's the height? Is it 1 half? Isn't the height 1 half? Oh. Square root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. It's, it's oh, which one's negative? negative. Square root three over two. Is that negative? Oh. That one's positive. Isn't this one the negative? Yeah. Is that the coordinate for negative pi over 6? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, for cosine, which one do we want, though? So it looks like 
we have 1 over the x, so that's square root 3 over 2. Well, that's great. Nice, fun, simplifying. Okay, we flip it, so doesn't that end up being 2 over square root 3? Which you then have to multiply by square root 3 over 3, which is 2 square root 3 over 3. Which without a calculator, it's kind of hard to know that exact value. But we'll leave that for now. Because we're just seeing which one's biggest, which one's smallest. Next one. G of 0. Hopefully this one's easier. So cosine 0 is 1. So my answer is 1 over 1, which is 1. Ooh, that was nice. Did I do that right? I think so. And the last one. G of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is this one right here, correct? Which that looks like it's um, 1 half over and square root 3 over 2. Both positive? Yep. It sometimes helps to draw, especially with the negatives and positives. If you're in like this quadrant and what quadrant you're in. Anywho. So that's 1 over cosine pi over 3, which is 1 over, what is it? Is it the 1 half? So 1 over 1 half, which is 2. Oh, okay, cool. So we have these three values. Okay. So looking at these two, this is the biggest, this is the smallest, but what is that? Well, let's just approximate. Let's just kind of think, figure this out. What is that approximative? Like 1.5-ish? 1.7? Okay. Okay. You have two times, let's just say it's like about 1.7. Now, how the heck did I know that? Jeremy. Yeah, we have some people with good brains. Or we just think about the square root of 3 is closer to the square root of 4 than the square root of 1. And square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 4. It's closer to, square root of 4 is 2. Somewhere between 1 and 2, closer to 2. If we do that, basically, that's going to be fun. But that right there equals 3.4 over 3. Now, is that bigger or smaller than 1? Does it matter exact number? That's bigger than 1, but is it going to be bigger than 2? So is it somewhere between these two? So this guy is somewhere between those two, so we kind of can ignore that one. Are we okay with that? You just kind of got to look at the numbers and kind of generally approximate. So it looks like our minimum, or absolute minimum, which one is it? That one? Is zero one, and our absolute maximum is pi over three comma two. There's your answer.